Hi. In this video, we're going to develop a formula to calculate the slope. Uh, a formula is going to be useful because it will mean that we won't always have to draw a graph if we want to find the slope of a line. Um, and it's also useful because sometimes if the numbers are messy, it's tricky to it's trickier to calculate the slope from a graph. Um, so in this case, the formula it's equally easy all of the time. So we'll develop this formula. So here's how we're going to go about developing the formula. Um, we're going to start with an example. We're going to look at how would we find the slope of the line going through A and B here. And we're going to be like extra explicit. We'll give more details than we would normally would if we just wanted to find the slope. Um, so we won't be careful not to do anything in our heads. We'll write everything down. And then we'll just do it. We'll say, well, what if we didn't have any numbers? How would we do that? And we'll follow the same steps. Okay, so we know that the slope is rise over run. Um, so if we're going from A to B, let's look at how we would, what the rise and the run would be. Oh dear, there we go. Okay, so we go over and we go up. So the run here. The question is, the run is when um, the change in the x, and some people would call this delta x mean change in x. So how much do we go over to get from 2 to 5? So what's the run to get from 2 to 5 on the x-axis? So you probably know the answer to that, but what I'm going to do is we'll write down how we could calculate that. Suppose those were big numbers or numbers, messy numbers, how do we figure it out? Well we just do 5 take away 2. Okay, because that's how much more 5 is compared to 2. It's 5 take away 2. The difference. Um, when we talk about the difference in the x's, the change in x's, the difference again means subtraction. So that run is 5 take away 2, and that's 3. The rise here, it's going to be similar. The rise is how much we, the, the change in the y's. Put delta y here too. Um, and so the rise is how much do we go up to get from a point A to point B? So how far is it from 4 to 6? So again, what we can do instead of, uh, probably everyone knows the answer, but what we could do if we didn't was we could do 6 take away 4. And that's 2. So down here, let's write what we did. The slope is equal to rise over run. And the rise was 6 minus 4. And the run was 5 minus 2. That right there is actually the part we're going to need. But let's finish this off. The 6 minus 4 we said was 2. And the 5 minus 2 we said was 3. So the slope was two-thirds. Okay, so let's look at, suppose we didn't have numbers. Suppose if we want a formula that will work for any numbers. So what we're going to have now, instead of having the nice point A two four, suppose we just had A, and there's just an X and a Y. Okay, and then suppose we have the point B. We also just had an X and a Y. Now, right away, we run into a tiny problem here, because these x values aren't the same. B is farther over. But it's kind of nice to have x and y, because that keeps us from mixing up which is the x value and which is the y value. So what we're going to do is just a really easy fix to this. A is our first point, just because of alphabetical order. So I'm just going to put little subscripts here. I'll just call that, instead of just being x, I'll call it x1. And this y value, instead of being y, will just be y1. Okay, and if b is the second point, I can just call that x, x2, and that y, y2. So these numbers could be anything. Okay. Now we'll look at how we get from a to b. So, oh, I should have left a bit more space here, all the way up here. So this is the run down here. And let's look at let's look at what we did over here finding the run. 
we found the run over here. We looked at five. That came from here. And we subtracted two. That came from there. So this is the first number was our the x value on the bigger the well in this case it was the bigger one. It actually doesn't matter. But we you will use the x value from the second point. And then we subtracted the x value from the first point. So here we said 5 minus 2. What we're going to do now is, so it's red minus orange. We'll say it's red is x2 minus x1. So we're just subtracting to see how much did the x values change by. And the run again will work similarly. So with the run, before what we did was we had 6. So that came from here, the y value of the second point. And we subtracted 4, which came from the y value of that point there. So if we look back at our case with just where we've got x1 and y1 and x2 and y2, to find them on a purple point is this one, and our blue point is the second one, uh, the first y value is here. So then the run that means is going to be purple minus blue, so it's y2 minus y1. So all this is, this is super intuitive to people when we've got numbers. But all I want you to focus on is just the fact that the run here is how f what's the difference between the height of the first point and the height of the second point? Um, how could we calculate this distance if we know these two numbers? And the answer is you just subtract. So that's all we did here. So then, if we've got the slope, we know that the slope is rise over run. So the rise, oh my dear, look what I did. That shouldn't be the run at all, that should be the rise. Sorry about that. Because that's how much we're going up there, so that's definitely rising. Okay, so the rise is the change in the y values, which is what we get if we subtract there, y2 minus y1, and then the run is x2 minus x1. So this right here is actually a formula we're going to use quite a lot. We use this formula. Sometimes it's not really worth it to draw a graph if you have some coordinates. And sometimes it's not really obvious from the graph. It's no more obvious than with this formula. So this formula is pretty useful. So it's the change in the y's, so we're subtracting the y values over the change in the x's. And you just got to be careful that you start with, it doesn't matter which point is your first point, where the x1 and y1 are, but your x1 has to be on the same point as your y1. And then the other point's got to be x2 and y2. Okay, good luck.